Wow. Um, are you following what's going on with Virginia? Because apparently there, it's, it's just scorched earth at this point. It would seem the Democrats are destroying themselves. It would be nice to imagine that Republican opposition research allowed these people to get elected, sat on all of this evidence, and then released it at the last minute. But that's not, that's just not true. The Republicans were ineffective. They were unable to win the governorship in Virginia, even though Ralph Northam dressed in blackface. He admitted it. But now it gets crazier. My God. Seriously, this, okay, look, we know this is bad for Democrats, but I just have to take this opportunity to wag the finger at Republicans. How? How? In 2004, this dude, Justin Fairfax, was accused of sexual assault. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know when the accusation came out, but apparently the story was buried last year and it was from 2004. This dude just admitted to blackface too. You kidding me? The cascading blackface and sexual assault scandals roiling Virginia politics explained. Ralph Northam, Justin Fairfax, and Mark Herring, the top three Democrats in Virginia government are now ensnared in a scandal. And apparently people believe Democrats that it's Democrats sabotaging each other. Because Ralph Northam won't resign, giving up to Fairfax. But then a story comes out about Fairfax sexually assaulting a woman. And then the claims coming from the Democrats now are that it was a Northam camp fan or something that pushed this story out. Oh my God, it gets crazier. You ready for this? Are you ready for this? Jonathan Allen, political reporter at NBC News, tweeted, Justin Fairfax said, quote, fuck that bitch as he tried to discredit his accuser during a private meeting Monday night. Sources tell NBC News, uh, jo- Jeff R. Bennett and me. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. Justin Fairfax. This whole thing is exploding. This is the craziest story I've seen in such a long time. When Ralph Northam was accused of blackface, what did he do? My God. He denies being in the photo, admits to being in blackface, and then contemplates moonwalking at the press conference. This is incredible. It's like the world is falling apart before our very eyes. Justin Fairfax, then accused of, of sexually assaulting a woman. He's a lieutenant governor. He's supposed to take over when Northam resigns. What happens? Story comes out about assault. So what does he do? M- my God, two, a couple days ago, he says literally, fuck that bitch. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Virginia's done. I have no idea what you do at this point. This is actually really scary. Okay, this, this, is, this is epic. What? It gets worse. Mark Herring. He then comes out and admits to blackface too. I throw, my, I throw my hands up. I have no idea what to do at this point, but I pulled up Vox on purpose because Vox is left. Let's see what they have to say, because I hope they condemn all of this. The crisis in Virginia state politics is still picking up speed. Democratic Governor Ralph Northam is under pressure to resign after photos from his 1984 medical school yearbook surface showing people in blackface and KKK robes and other people in the yearbook in blackface. If Northam were to leave office, Justin Fairfax would succeed him. But now a college professor has accused Fairfax of sexually assaulting her in 2004, an accusation that the Washington Post appeared to find credible if uncorroborated when she contacted them about it in 2017. What is that, two years ago? No, I think it was December. Maybe. I don't know. More than a year ago. They knew. This guy runs anyway. They don't publish his story. I did a video about it. Then, Attorney General Mark Herring who would be next in line after Fairfax revealed on Wednesday morning that he had also appeared in blackface at a college party in the 80s. Are you kidding me? How does this, this is incredible. Oh my God, Uh, Democrats, you elected a trove, a slew of racists. And and, and I got to say, when you look at a little kid, uh, okay, I shouldn't say little kid, when you look at a teenager and he's smirking, he's got a red MAGA hat on, and your reaction is, how dare he smile? That symbol of white, hetero, cis-heteronormative patriarchy. What are you going to do now? You got two white dudes who just in blackface. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he's a black man who was accused of sexually assaulting a woman. A woman. Well, we got to believe all women. And these guys are racists. So uh, the interesting thing I heard is that Ralph Northam is considering run, uh, staying in office and abandoning the Democratic Party running and, and just uh, governing as an independent it's crazy. Dude, I, I, I'm reticent to say such a thing, but you got it. You got you, all of them resign. All of them just just wipe out. Get rid of it. We're, this is this is absolutely insane. They say just two years ago, 
Virginia Democrats delivered a resounding victory that turned the state decidedly blue. Northam won the government's mansion and Democrats picked up, a, uh, picked up a significant number of legislative wins, affirmation that the party still had a future in the Donald Trump era. But you went and, you went and elected a uh, bunch of racists. So how does that feel? This week, the era of good feelings has come crashing down with the top three Democrats ensnared in scandals founded in the state's racist history and the country's current reckoning with sexual assault. If every state official enmeshed in a scandal resigned, Democrats would lose control of the state government. The next in the state's line of succession is Kirk Cox, a Republican who became House Speaker after a close race ended with a name being drawn out of a bowl. Well, I think at this point you got to do it. See, I look, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've never been someone to say go back 30 years and condemn someone for those actions that long ago. I believe it's up to the people of Virginia to decide who should lead them. But this is a problem, okay? It's, it's all of them. Okay, it's, this is <laughs> how an abortion bill and an old year, uh, yearbook photo put Ralph Northam's career in jeopardy. The yearbook photo was first published on a conservative site, Big League Politics, when Northam was at the center of a controversy that fired up the right. The firestorm started with a Virginia abortion bill, House Bill 2491, that would roll back some of the state's requirements on abortion, including a 24-hour waiting period and a requirement that second trimester abortions take place in a hospital. The bill, was always, the bill was always a long shot legislatively, especially because of, the, of a controversy over a provision that would reduce the number of doctors required to sign off on a third trimester abortion from three to one. In a Wednesday radio interview, Northam discussed the matter, and that's where things went awry. Went, went awry. Wow, why did I say awry? A parent discussed what would happen if a child was born after a failed attempt at abortion. Northam said the infant would be, resuscita- would be resuscitative if that's what the mother and family desired. Then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. Some took Northam's comments as an endorsement of infanticide. In just a few years, pro-abortion zealots went from safe, legal, and rare to keep the newborns comfortable while the doctor d- debates infanticide. But it is. It, it is. Listen, if a baby's alive, okay, I understand. Listen, there are some circumstances with extreme deformities where the baby isn't going to survive beyond a few days. And it's a really tough decision. You know, should should the doctors do everything in their power to keep a baby alive when the baby likely wouldn't survive? I don't know. But I will say this. If you have a baby and you think it might not survive, therefore let it die, that is not acceptable and a government shouldn't allow that. Just because a doctor believes it might not make it doesn't mean you let it die. That, that's, that's scary to me. It is. Because there have been instances, people have highlighted this, where even though the baby was slighted, the doctor said it's not going to make it, they do. And they become normal people and they survive. And that's a big problem. Do we just let babies die because of a chance they might? If there's a chance they might live, then shouldn't we push for the chance to have them live? Again, I recognize in, in cases of extreme deformity and like, you've, you know, it, it, there is nuance there. But what we're talking about is a blanket assessment of a baby that is born and alive and they decide to kill it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, 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 let's hold on there, all right? You're getting into dangerous territory, that kind of language. Let's move on. A, spokesman, a spokesperson for Governor Northam told Vox's comments were absolutely not a reference to infanticide, and they were focused on the tragic and ex- extremely rare cases in which a woman with a non-viable pregnancy or severe f- fetal abnormalities went into labor. Sure, but he didn't frame it that way. And more importantly, they said they would resuscitate. Let's listen. Listen. Okay. It's uh, fine. Let's take him at his word. Let's say, I, I think it's fair to say that he was, he was probably thinking about extreme abnormality. No problem. But, this is the but. Even if you have a baby that's abnormal and non-viable or whatever, resuscitating it and then killing it is absolutely psychotic. Okay? If the baby is born, is stillborn, you don't try and bring it back to life only to kill it again. That's freakishly insane, okay? I, <laughs> I don't know how you defend this. I'm, I, uh, I'm pro-choice. Where, what's happening? Oh my God. But in the wake of, I mean, listen, is it any surprise that's the narrative at what we're looking at? Is it any, how are you, at this point, just say, okay, we get it. Dude, just, 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 he's gone. The comments he made were ridiculous. Even if you want to defend, um, you know, uh, a baby that's abnormal or deformed or whatever, why you would resuscitate it to then kill it. I have no idea. That sounds monstrous and just insane. But but again, the point I'm making is at this point, 
with the sordid history of all of these individuals and the responses they're having right now to the controversy, you know what? I'm done. Don't defend him. Just say, you know what? He's a nut. Get rid of him. Get rid of all of them. How is, how is this possible? Oh, let's move on from the, from the yearbook thing. When the Virginia pilot reported on the photo on Friday, the outlet noted that it wasn't clear whether Northam was actually in it. Northam's statements have made it seem like he wasn't clear either. He then came out and said it wasn't him. So then, just on Fairfax, uh, it was hilarious. A woman then said Fairfax had sexually assaulted her in 2004. And Bernie said Fairfax should step up. Ooh, should he now? I mean, he's been credibly accused, right? And if he's been credibly accused, he probably shouldn't. Sorry, you're out. Actually, I'll say this. In, 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 in uh, removing the, the humor from the situation, this guy is accused. And that should be substantiated. That shouldn't disqualify him, but he has been accused, and I think it's important to investigate. However, I do think he should be removed because of this. Because on Monday, he said, fuck that bitch. Okay, okay, okay. You done crossed the line, buddy. You're walking on thin ice to begin with. You've been accused. Well, hold on. I don't think that disqualifies you. It's just an accusation. Coming out and pointing the finger at those who do accuse you and saying, fuck that bitch. I'm not going to defend you anymore. Okay, we're out. I'm out. I'm done. These people don't deserve the defense of anybody. So Justin Fairfax, he's denied it unequivocally, whatever. Mark Herring then came out. Now, people are actually praising Mark Herring, saying he came out and talked about it, admitted it, had a larger conversation about it. Sure, that's fine, <laughs> but you can't escape it. Um, I'm, I don't want to go on too long, so we'll end it here. Uh, stick around. I got another video coming up in a few minutes, but I guess the final, oh, we'll read the final thought. They say the new governor could potentially serve for seven years, never before seen in Virginia history, if they took over for Northam and won re-election in 2021. Okay, I'm out. Virginia, you're you're a, tr- a dumpster fire. You know, people want to criticize Trump and talk about the U.S. being a dumpster fire. I'm sorry, this is this is a literal dumpster fire. This is wow. Okay, it's fig- it's figuratively a literal dumpster fire. I'm done. I don't want to rant. I got another video coming up. I'll see you then.